So earlier this year, I took a train trip aboard the Golden Chariot down in the south of India. And part of that trip was about experiencing the food, of course. And in the south of India, the food is quite different to what you actually see and taste in the north. We were really lucky on board that train to experience a cooking class with Chef Ashwini, who is the executive chef of the Golden Chariot. Now I'm going to try and replicate that chicken dish today. It's called Kandapur Curry, and we'll see if it comes up to be anything near what Chef made for us. So the best way to make a curry is to actually make the curry paste from scratch. And certainly in India, that's exactly what they do. They take the time to put all the herbs and spices together and allow that flavour to develop. So the first part of our curry making today is going to be putting that paste together for the Kandapur curry. So I have here some black peppercorns, some cloves. There's only two there, you can't really see them rolling around. There they are. We've got some coriander seeds as well and we've got some shredded coconut. Now in India, they would use fresh coconut, but I don't have that at my disposal at home, so shredded coconut it is. We've also got some red chilies, and we'll be using some cinnamon stick as well. So we're just going to put those all into a tray to put them into the oven. So we'll just tip them all in. The one thing we will have to watch when we're roasting these is to just be careful with the shredded coconut because if anything's likely to burn, it's going to be the coconut. We'll just pop those chilies on top and the desiccated coconut. So it's time to bring this out of the oven now. It's only been in there for a couple of minutes. You can see that the coconut is quite brown. I can smell the aromas coming off those spices and I can particularly smell the chilli starting to, to get that really sort of spicy smell about it. Okay, so our ingredients are now out of the oven. It's time to put it into the mortar and pestle and grind this into a paste. I can really smell this now. It's starting to really release those flavours as we chop into them and grind them up. Quite therapeutic too. So this is quite a dry paste, so we need to add just a little bit of water just to allow me to move this around the mortar and pestle a little and bind it all together. It doesn't really matter if you put a little bit too much water in, it's, it's really by, by feel. Okay, so I've been going at this now for a little while and I've finally got it into the shape I'd like it. It's a nice paste. And so now that we've done that paste, we can just put that aside and get on with making the rest of the curry and we'll use this paste a little bit later. So when you're making a curry, it's not just about the paste. There's another whole set of ingredients that go into making that curry as well. So that's the step we're up to now. It's time to get the rest of the ingredients together and finalise this curry. So these first lot of ingredients are actually going to go into our pan. So I'm just going to put some coconut oil in here first. We want about one and a half tablespoons of this coconut oil. Then we want about a third of a teaspoon of cumin seeds. So we'll just pop these. This is all going to go into the bowl. And curry leaves. Now this morning I've spent so long trying to find fresh curry leaves. I went to five or six different stores but it seemed to be that today wasn't going to be my day so I've had to make do with dried curry leaves. I'm sure it'll still do the same trick. This recipe would probably call for about five but these are quite small so I'm going to throw in a handful of these. So in they go. Then I need some onion so we'll chop up the onion. into our pan. Now we're going to make a garlic and ginger paste. So a bit of fresh garlic, a bit of fresh ginger. We're just going to peel those and chop them up. So the easiest way I find to get the skin off ginger is to just use a spoon. And if you just run the spoon over the skin, it comes off fairly easily. You can chop it off of course, but I find that when you chop it off, you actually take half the ginger with it. So far easier just to, um, to do this. And just use the knife then for the sort of really chunky bits that you can't get off. Okay. 
Now I only need about two thirds of a tablespoon of the garlic and ginger paste, so what I've got here will be more than enough. We'll just pop them into this press. There's quite a bit coming out of that. We'll just pop that straight into our bowl. And then for the ginger, I'll just use a zester. I find that much easier for grating my ginger. All right, so then you've got this beautiful ginger. We'll just put that straight into the um, pot as well. Next, we'll slice up our green chili. Now again, whether you take the seeds out or leave them in is entirely up to you. I'm gonna take the seeds out of this one, just simply because I had the red chili in the other and I left all the seeds in there. So I'm just gonna pop the seeds out of the green chili. The great thing about these curries is that whilst there's a lot of ingredients, they're actually quite simple ingredients and everything gets thrown in together. So the process itself is not hard. Before I actually kick that off on the stove, I will chop some tomatoes. And that's simply because once we get those ingredients that are there now nice and brown, we're going to add in some turmeric and some chopped tomatoes. So I'll get these ready to go now. That way I don't have to stop. Okay, so it's time to kick off the cooking of our ingredients. So I'll put that on a reasonable heat. Put this on. So I can see that that oil is just starting to melt now. So I'm just going to now work all these ingredients around, give them a good coating in it all. It all should start to sizzle fairly soon. So we're just gonna lightly saute these. We just want them to be lightly brown the onions just a little bit soft. So it's now time to introduce the chicken. So I'm just using thigh fillets here on the bone. So they do have the skin on and they do have the bone on. I'm going to leave that in for flavour. Certainly this is quite authentic for Indian cooking. They, they cook all of their proteins on the bone. The bone obviously brings added flavour, but of course, if you don't have this type of chicken or you don't like this type of chicken, normal thigh fillets would be fine or any type of chicken cut really. You just have to be careful with chicken breast. This is going to cook a little bit slowly for a while so that I can infuse all these beautiful flavours in the chicken. I wouldn't recommend that with chicken breast because it will just become really dry and horrible. So I just want to make sure that these flavours have been loved by this chicken as well. So this is the paste that we made earlier. So we're just going to put all of that in here now and give that a good stir through. And we'll also just add in a little bit of water. Otherwise this would be just way too dry. So just pour some water in. So we'll add just a little bit of salt to that. This is the only salt that we've put in so far. Just a little bit, just to season it. I'm going to add just a little bit more water into this because it still just looks a little bit too dry. So I'll put the rest of this water in. Move that all around. It's going to cook down beautifully. What we'll just do now is just put the lid on. I'm just going to let that simmer away for a little bit. Maybe 15 to 20 minutes and we'll come back, check on it and add in a few more ingredients. So let's have a look at the chicken. Seems to be doing quite nicely. Just move it around a bit. I like to just continually turn the chicken over because it just allows these beautiful flavours to get all over it. Not much point having all of this flavour if it doesn't actually touch the chicken. So I've just started to use a spoon so that I can pick up that paste and just actually plop it on top of the chicken. So it's got it underneath it, but it's also got it sitting over the top of it. So while this chicken is cooking, I'm going to cook up some rice. I'm just going to use standard basmati rice. Very good with Indian food. We'll just leave that in for a little bit. 
let that cook on for a little bit. Okay, so this chicken is coming along beautifully. The chicken is really starting to look like it's really well cooked. The aromas coming off all of these spices is just fantastic. We're about to add in some tamarind puree. Now, this is something that in India they would use tamarind pulp. They'd have real tamarinds. It's not something that's easy to come by where I live. I remember seeing them as a kid and my friends used to eat them, but haven't seen them for, for 20 years. So what I just use now is a puree available from the supermarket and it works just as well. And then we're also going to drop in just a little bit of coconut milk. Now this calls for a certain number of tablespoons. I'm just gonna drop a little bit in that I think will make it look pretty good. And then we'll give that another stir. Continue to move that chicken around. We want this sauce all over it. Now I've left the skin on this chicken, but it doesn't really offer any value to the end result. I've left it on for flavor, but because we're not crispening it up, it'll be a bit yucky at the end, I think. Others will eat it, but I'll be taking my chicken skin off. It's probably a healthier option as well. All right, we'll just pop that back on just for a little bit longer. Beautiful sauce. Chicken's cooked beautifully. It's time for it to come out. So the curry's done. It's really very simple to make. It's taken about half an hour for this to cook through from the time we started sauteing the original ingredients right through to the cooking of the chicken. It's a simple process. There's a few ingredients to go in it, yes, but it is actually really easy to make and it's quite rewarding to end up with a curry like this at the end. So that I don't make a complete mess of myself, I'm going to pick these chicken pieces up first using some tongs. I'll just place these into my dish and then I'll deal with the sauce because I just know that if I try and put it all in at once, I'll end up with sauce absolutely everywhere. So most of this will just pour over. I'm doing quite well at the moment. I haven't managed to spill too much at all. I'll just get those final bits because I don't want to waste any of this glorious sauce. I'll just pour that over the chicken. Oh gosh, this just smells divine. And it really does take me back to that trip aboard the Golden Chariot. Then I've just got some rice. As I said, I made basmati rice. So I'll just put the rice in a separate bowl. Easy to self-serve that way. Now this recipe also calls for coriander. Not a big fan of coriander. I'm happy to have sort of coriander seeds and, and ground coriander in things, but when it comes to real live coriander, it's quite a polarizing type of herb, and it's one that I probably prefer not to eat. But what I've got here is this marvelous bunch of my own homegrown parsley. So I'm just going to sprinkle some of my parsley on the top. Looks like coriander, just tastes a whole lot better. So there you have it, that's my version of the Kandapur curry chicken as learnt from Chef Ashwini on board the Golden Chariot. Now I'm not sure if I've done it true justice. I think it's pretty good, it looks good, it smells good. I'm sure it's gonna taste good and I'm sure the chef would be very proud.